All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is October 12th. It is Tuesday. It is around 9 a.m. here in San Diego, California. And today on In the Fight, we will be reacting and recapping what was the epic conclusion to the Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury trilogy. I think this is one we can put down in the history books. It was that good of a night. Let's get into it. This is In the Fight. October 9th. October 9th, 2021. It is the first time in my entire lifetime of fandom for boxing MMA where I can confidently say I got to experience one of the greatest trilogies in the history of combat sports. I'm willing to go there. I'm willing to have that conversation. In MMA, in boxing, you're constantly told over and over by the old heads, you should have seen the guys fighting when I was young. You should have seen it. The guys back in my day would kick these guys. And it's so old and it's so tiresome. But now, after what we got to watch, after the performance we saw from both Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, I can confidently say I got to experience one of the greatest trilogies in the history of combat sports. There is nothing like heavyweight boxing, and, and this weekend proved it. Uh, let's start with this. Both men. God damn, those are men. Those are warriors. Those are Spartans. That is how you approach combat sports in every sense of, you know, in every sense of the genre. God, it was beautiful to watch. So Deontay Wilder, after the second fight, he gets finished in the second fight and he talks about, I don't want the towel thrown from my corner. I want to go out on my shield. That is the saying over and over. I want to go out on my shield. And well, he did it this weekend. He, he did it, right? He took a beating on Saturday night. Took a very, very brutal and violent punishment from the hands of Tyson Fury. But there's two ways to do this, okay? The first way to go out on your shield is to cover up. I think we see this a lot. Guys taking a beating and they cover up. They go to the corner and they, they don't really have any more fight in them. And, and that's what it is. And by the way, I'm not criticizing anyone who's ever done that. The people generally experiencing that cover-up sensation are going through more punishment and more pain than anyone at home could ever understand. But that is one route. And then the other route is the fight-or-flight response. When Deontay Wilder gets hit, he fires back. It's the only answer he has. It's the only thing he knows to do is to fire back with bad intentions. And I think in every great division, in every great generation of boxing, they talk about incredible power, right? Oh, you know, Foreman, all he has to do is, is touch you and, and he's got incredible power. Frazier, it's the hooks. Joe Frazier, he's got incredible power in those hooks. And I think with every generation, Mike Tyson of the, the late 80s and 90s, there's great power. But I think there's a difference between great power when you're healthy and you're feeling great and you land something early. And there's a difference between great power when you have energy, right? You're feeling good early in the fight. Round one, round two, round three, you're able to knock people out. But what Deontay Wilder has is none of that. Deontay Wilder has power that carries with him through late rounds and while he's hurt. It's fucking remarkable what power Deontay Wilder has in that right hand. The fight was absolute madness. Round three, Tyson Fury pours it on. In the opening rounds, you saw Deontay Wilder make a pretty significant strategic change, right? At least in game plan. He was going to attempt a lot of leading, spearing jabs to the body. But that kind of went away as the fight went on. In round three, Tyson Fury pours it on, lands a huge knockdown. And from that point on, pretty much has Wilder on the ropes the entirety of the fight. With the exception of round four. And in the span of five minutes, right, you're, you're texting your dad, you're texting a brother, you're texting a friend, whoever it might be. And you're saying, oh my goodness, Fury pours it on in round three. And by the time they respond to you, Wilder's landed a huge knockdown in the fourth round. A knockdown that I honestly think ends a lot of fights. Tyson Fury is not, you know, your ordinary heavyweight and he's the Gypsy King for a reason. Deontay Wilder's power is rare. You don't see that kind of power every day. And it carries with him late into rounds. It carries with him while he's hurt. 
But I think we got what most people expected, and that was that Tyson Fury is the better boxer. He's the better fighter. That proved again after I don't even know how many rounds now is that. He got a round 11 finish this weekend. That was 18 rounds in the last two fights, and then the first right went 12. So over 20 rounds together between them. Tyson Fury is the better boxer. And, dude, you, you start to look at this. What heavyweight in history is beating Tyson Fury? Six foot nine and can box the lights out? What heavyweight in history is beating that? I think we can really start to have that conversation. Granted, Deontay Wilder did talk about this. Tyson Fury came in at 277 pounds. If you come in that big, you're not really going in to dance. You're not going to float like a butterfly in that ring at 277 pounds. Tyson Fury went into brawl. And if we're going to have a little bit of fun for 25 seconds, this was a fight. And just again, having fun. I have no evidence to support this. This appeared that maybe Tyson felt really confident coming into this fight. Maybe it was a three or four week camp as opposed to a six or eight week camp. Uh, Wilder appeared more motivated coming into this fight. And this is just all speculation. I'm just having fun with you guys. This appeared like Fury felt really confident coming into this fight and that this was a lesser so camp in terms of motivation, in terms of uh, extreme measurements. Lastly, the th one of the things I want to touch on is, is what happens after the fight. Deontay Wilder heads straight back to the locker room. Tyson Fury criticizes, uh, criticizes him for it. Uh, John Fury, Tyson's father, criticizes him for it and says, you know, this is a sportsmanship sport or this is a gentleman's sport. You, you know, you're supposed to show love. You're supposed to shake hands. Fuck that. Honestly, fuck that. Deontay Wilder took so much punishment in this fight. I think he earned every bit of his right to go to the locker room and spend time with only his doctors and only his family. I think Deontay Wilder earned that right, if you ask me. Deontay Wilder took a lot of punishment in this fight. I'm not telling him what to do. He has earned the right to do what he wants with his future. If I was in Deontay Wilder's camp, I would heavily consider retirement. You took a huge beating on Saturday. You've made a ton of money, and you've done it, right? Deontay Wilder is the American dream. Working four jobs to support his kids, getting into boxing to support his family, and then making millions upon millions, becoming a heavyweight champion, taking on the sport laid on in life. Deontay Wilder is the American dream. Let's not lose sight of that. And then the last question that you have to ask is, what do you do next for Tyson Fury? Obviously, he could take on Alexander Usyk, right, to unify the belts. Does Alexander Usyk have to rematch with Anthony Joshua? Does he take? Does Tyson Fury take on a Dylan White in the meantime? In my opinion, Anthony Joshua has been incredibly active over the last five, six years. He's taken on a ton of top competitors and put on some really compelling fights. I think D Anthony Joshua has deservingly earned the right to a rematch. The first fight with Usyk wasn't particularly close, but I believe he has earned the right to a rematch. I'll leave with this. I don't know if this is the greatest fight of all time, but it's certainly top 10. And in my experience, this is certainly top five. I don't know if I can say it's Corrales, Castillo. I don't know if I can say that this is the thrill in Manila type, you know, legendary epic fight. But this was a heavyweight battle of epic proportions. It felt very mythological and was an absolute pleasure to watch. Thank you to these two Spartans. And thank you to you guys for tuning into In The Fight. It's another episode. Next week we will be back. We have some exciting guests that we have lined up over the course of the next five, six weeks that I am very stoked. I was counting today. I believe we have interviewed five UFC champions over the last 12 months, and we look to keep that going. So thank you guys for tuning in. This is In The Fight.